Welcome and good evening, New Hope. I know you're used to seeing me at the end, but I am filling in for our sister Donette. So keep your prayers with her. Uh, blessing is not feeling well, so we know how sick babies can be. Though she's not much of a baby anymore, is she? So as I found out last week, you all have Presbyterian Pilates. But now, Donette is telling me, you know what, Rashawn? I forgot to tell them to check their pulse. So go ahead, hold your finger to your pulse on your neck or your wrist. And hopefully, we are all feeling a rhythmic pulse rate. If that's not the case, then are there any members of health and wellness here? <laughs> okay. just, just making sure. When you work out, you're supposed to check your pulse periodically. While cooling down from the intensity of the workout, checking your pulse gives you the indication of your recovery time to return your heart rate back to normal. When we check our spiritual pulse rate, the heart we feel isn't our own. It's the heart of Christ. As Christians, we never have to worry about our recovery time, though, or that it will be prolonged. Christ was sent to recover us from the evils of sin and the troubles of this world. In Christ, we are quickly recovered and restored to the fitness that comes from being made whole through salvation. So as you put your hand on your heart and put one hand in the air, you should feel the pulse of Christ in you. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> this evening, we will hear a message of encouragement from Reverend Dr. John McKee. We welcome Reverend McKee to New Hope. He is from Tribuco Canyon Presbyterian Church. And we want to thank you in advance for the word of God that you're gonna share with us today. Tonight we have the privilege of being led in worship by Marjorie Ambrose. So let us center ourselves in the spirit of praise and worship as Marjorie comes to lead us, because no situation should change your praise, but praise should certainly change your situation. Thank you, Rashawn. Good evening, church. Would you rise with me for the call to worship? And please repeat the phrase after each statement that I read. We need you, Lord God, in times of joy and in times of sadness. Come, God, come. Be with us in times of clarity and in times of chaos. Come, God, come. Be with us in times of peace and in times of war. Come, God, come. Be with us in times of abundance and in times of scarcity. Come, God, come. 
Come, God, come and be with us on the journey. Remain standing for our song of praise.
please remain standing with me for a time of confession. And let's pray. Merciful God, if we were perfect, we would never take your grace for granted, but we fail in this area over and over again. Forgive us for not caring as we should and for not loving others as we could. We often take matters of life into our own hands without praying or seeking your guidance. We pass judgment and do the bare minimum to support others. Forgive our sins and restore our faith in your unfailing love so that we might live as you have taught us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Please take this time and meditate on your personal relationship with God. Friends, hear this good news and see the grace of God. God's compassion never ends and is filled with forgiveness. Rejoice in a new day in which we can carry the love of Jesus into every encounter. I don't know about you, but this is reassurance and affirmation that restores the soul and it revives the spirit. Friends, we are not bound by sin. We are free to live out the promise of Christ. Amen. Friends, we have invited God in. We have given praise. We've confessed our sins. And we have walked in the renewing and the cleansing of our souls by being reassured that we are loved. So we come to this place where we pray together and we pray for ourselves and for each other. So I invite you to stand for a moment as we have a prayer time, you know, back at the old church we would form a circle but COVID has changed some things for us so we form this circle in our hearts and we form this circle as we consider 
our personal needs, but we expand beyond that and consider the needs of others around us. So as we go into this time of prayer, I invite you to call out your own name if you need to, but to also call out the names of those for whom you have great care and concern. Call out your praise, call out your hope. Let us pray together. Kim Smith. Reverend John McKay, Marjorie, Rashawn, Robin, Don and Marionette, Mark, Trey, Reggie, Alva. God love on us. God, show us the way when the way seems unclear. Our pulse rate is steady in Jesus. So we need you now because you made us. You made us to be people of your promise. We are victorious and we won't be stopped in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, y'all know we've been singing a song. And one of the things that we promised you is that the choir is the congregation. And what you see up here is the congregation practiced and perfected in the name of Jesus. But we're all the choir. So let us remind ourselves and give praise to God by singing the song that we've learned. God made me who I am. You ready? I'm going to let the band start us off this time. <laughs> made me. He made me who I am. Yes, yes, yes. God made me. song this is our song God made me he made me who I am God made me here we go he made me who I am this is an affirmation to our confession and to his salvation I am a conqueror, I am victorious, I won't be stopped, I won't be stopped, I'm a believer, yes, I'm an achiever, I won't be blocked, I won't be blocked, yes, God. God hears us. of the peace. Let's pass the peace of who we know we are before the Lord. Let us pass the peace and we will pass that peace 
until the music stops. And you know we got to get back to our seats. So God bless you. God bless the assurance of God's word. Let us pass the peace of Christ together. We're not hugging, but you might hug anyway. But, you know, what can I say? <laughs> you may be seated. Let's pray. Bless us with your word, Lord. Empower us and help us to see ourselves in you. Remove all distractions. Give us open minds and hearts to hear you and to follow you. We seek to be changed, and we thank you for faith and inspiration. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So tonight's text is not from the book of Job. We're going to jump to the book of Deuteronomy. So it didn't mean to... Uh, you know, unsettle anybody here who was expecting something else. Chapter 6, this is uh, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you're at home, when you're away, when you lie down, and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and also on your gates. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Amen.
Amen. Can you hear me all right? All right. I'm going to do what the song told us to do. I'm praying right now. God, thank you for being present with us right now in this place. Our souls are awakened to your presence. You're healing us. You're restoring us. And this is a place of refuge where we can come and know that we're welcome, loved, and cherished. So, God, I pray as we open your word now, as we turn to you, I pray that we hear your voice above all other voices. And God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together are glorifying unto you, O oh Lord, our rock and our salvation. All God's people said amen. 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 Thank you so much for allowing me to be here tonight. I, am, I feel so honored and blessed. I'm getting emotional because this is so great. And I love your pastor. She has blessed our congregation many times with her good word and her presence, her countenance. So thank you for sharing her with us. I, I value being in partnership and ministry with you. It brings joy to my soul. And I, I, I know it brings joy to the soul of our congregation too. And I hope I want to bring your choir uh, to church some Sunday, and the band. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. As a congregation I serve, um, we're starting a new series called The Language of Hope. Words of comfort and words of call. And what we're doing is that we're exploring 10 words, 10 Hebrew words. Uh, they got nervous when I started saying we're going to study Hebrew together. They're like, what are you doing? want to do that and I said listen Hebrew word why Hebrew well you know Hebrew biblical Hebrew there are hang with me now I'm gonna get a little technical there are 8,000 words in biblical Hebrew 8,000 now you think wow that's a lot there are over 400,000 words in our English language so 8,000 that's many people say that biblical Hebrew is word poor but it's like a each word is like a suitcase packed full of all that stuff and when you open it up there's all this texture beauty and words that bring hope and a sense of comfort but also call in our lives and unpacking these key hebrew hebrew words that provide a journey a path pathway into the heart of god where god is calling us and and nurturing us and loving us and caring for us and and we hear god's mercy through these words is it's amazing Likewise, you know, Jesus said, all scripture, all scripture is a witness about me. Now, here's the interesting thing. When he said that, he was referring to the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. All scripture refers to me, it bears witness to me. As a young Jewish lad, he would have to memorize the Psalms in Hebrew, right? Oh, you guys know all this. Okay, good. <laughs> When he got up and he read that scroll, remember in Isaiah, and everybody's in the synagogue is silent and quiet, and here's this young man getting up and he starts reading out of Isaiah. It's in Hebrew, right? All the stories of God's people, creation, Noah and the ark, all those biblical Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all these stories are captured and carried and remembered in Hebrew. Moses out in the wilderness. He turns aside and he sees that burning bush. God speaks to him. What? That we have captured in Hebrew. So you could say God's language is Hebrew, right? I don't know if that's true or not. We'll find out, won't we, someday. When God speaks to Moses in the burning bush, he, Moses said, I want your name. I'm going to go down and you're telling me to go down to the Israelites and tell them that you're going to rescue them, deliver them. I need a name. And God says, okay, here's my name. Are you ready for it? I am who I am. You know, the root of that is to be. And so you could say the translation is, I will be who I am. And I am who I will be. And he's saying to Moses, I am who I am. And I will be who I will be for you. I am your God. I will be God for you. You could tell the Israelites that I am their God and I am for them. 
this was an important thing because the big question on their hearts when they were captives in, in Egypt, and for Moses who had escaped Egypt, and he's up in Midian, and he's got a new life, it seems comfortable and everything, but he's unsettled life because he's worried about his people, God's people, the Hebrew people, and they're held captive. And they're wondering, God, are you, this is the question, God, are you for us? Are you the God for us? Or are we to look somewhere else? This is how God responds. He says to Moses out of the burning bush, I have heard their cry. I have heard their cry. And I'm going to deliver them. Because I am the God for them. I am the God for them. I have heard their cry. And I'm going to deliver them. And by the way, you're going to do it. <clears throat> Moses. And you can remind them, I am for them, and it's a God who is faithful to them. <clears throat> they had that question, are you for us, God? And God delivers them, right? We know the story. But then things shift. God puts the question back on the people. The question comes at the last stop of the 40-year journey. Moses decides it's time to do a sermon. And guess what? His sermon is the book of Deuteronomy. That's a long sermon. 34 uh, chapters. That's a long I'm not going to do the whole sermon, Moses' sermon. <clears throat> That's long. But throughout this Moab wilderness sermon that he had, that he gave, he reminded the people that God made a covenant with them and that God held, upheld his side of the covenant. Covenant. And so now the question that Moses poses, and you heard the scripture earlier, God is asking, I, you know, I am with you. I am faithful. I am your God. Now are you with me? Are you with me? Is the question that God is asking the people. And it comes to us and was read so well. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our, is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your might. In some ways, God is saying, this is how I know you're with me. This is how I know you're with me. Keep them. Keep these words. Recite them. Talk about them. Bind them. Fix them. Write them down. The word here, the Hebrew word is Shema. Many of you know that. Shema means <clears throat> it's the same word that God uses when he says, I heard their cry. It's the Shema. I heard, I hear, I heard you. Often when we, when we think of hearing, we think of it as a mental activity. You bring in the, the words, the sound, and you make sense of it, and then, okay, I got it. We even think so much so, we'll even say to one another, well, it, it's the thought that counts. We, hearing is like, oh, I thought of it, so it counts. That's not Shema. <laughs> your kids think it is, though, right? You're raising them, and you're saying, all right, it's time to clean up your room. Did you hear me? I heard you. You go by their room a little bit later, that's not a clean room. That's not Shema. That's not hearing. The word Shema, hearing, means more than just mentally taking in the sound. It's more than, I hear you, bro, right? Shema is hearing, listening, understanding, and doing. Hearing, understanding, listening, and doing. Hearing for God is about action. I heard their cry, and I deliver them. I heard you, and you know I heard you because you've been delivered. The word Shema means both what is going on in our heads and the result of our actions. Jesus often said, when he finished a parable, he would say, anyone who has ears, let them hear. It's kind of a weird thing, right? So, well, most likely, everybody there had ears. But what is he saying? You have heard my teaching, take it to heart. If you heard my teaching, take it to heart and live it out. Likewise, Moses, the first word of Shema isn't just about hearing, it meant take heed. Take heed, listen, respond. It's a call to live out your life, live out your love for God with every part 
of your being with every part of your life. It's a daily recommitment, a dedication to follow God, take, he take heed of God's will for our lives. So Moses outlines it for him, right? He begins with your heart. And it's not just emotions. It's your mind as well. So sometimes in the New Testament, when Jesus asks, what's the greatest commandment? And the guy responds, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and might, right? Heart and mind, they're almost the same in the Hebrew language. Which was a new thing to me. I didn't know that. And I went to seminary. I know. That's why Paul will say, take captive every thought in your mind. Make it obedient to Christ. In the Gospels, the phrase, in all of your mind, there's an emphasis. The fact that for Moses' time, he would have understood as well that it's about your heart, it's also about your mind. It's the intellect, it's the emotions. Paul says so much too when he's writing to the early church in Philippi. And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all. Your, your kindness is what he's saying. Why? Because the Lord is near. He says, do not worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the God of peace, which surpasses all understanding, will what? Guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. They understood the heart and the mind together. So Moses is saying, love God with all of your heart. Take captive all of your thoughts. How you think about other people. A person at work. That person on the freeway that cut you off. That's hard for me to do. Take captive all of your thoughts and your heart. Love God with those. Don't hate. Love God with your mind and your heart. How we need that in our world. How we need that. And we can do that. And we can demonstrate that. And we can be examples for our world. And he says, love God with all your soul. With your soul. The implication is that we're to love God with all of our life. What does that look like? What does it mean, love God with our soul? Someone told me once, loving the Lord with all your soul means loving the Lord in the good days and in the bad days and in the in-between. In the good days and the bad days and all in between. That sounds like marriage, doesn't it? I love my wife, man. 37 years, okay? 37 years. And in a sense, that loving with all of our soul implies sacrifice. Implies sacrifice. When we love one another, we make sacrifices for each other. It's not just the sunny days, it's also when the days grow weary, when the days are stormy, when the days are just messy, we're to love God and trust God through that. The best example I have of that in my own life is my grandfather, his beautiful wife, my grandma. When they were young, had young children. My mom was 11 years old. They had a car accident. And my grandma was thrown from that auto, automobile, and she was paralyzed. And my grandfather sacrificed. He changed everything. He got a new job where he could be at home. He changed the house. He changed the house in a way, and one of the things I remember, he put in an elevator because he has a two-story house. And he made a lift. And in this lift was, as in olden days, it didn't have a button where you push. It had these chains that went through this mechanism, and he would crank it. And I remember he pushed my grandma in. We were little. We could sit on my grandma's wheelchair with her. And he pushed it, and I could just remember my grandfather. 
cranking away, cranking away his love for his bride, lifting her up to the upstairs, right? That's sacrifice. That's loving God. That's loving her with all his soul. And that's what we're called to do, loving God with all our souls and the good days and the bad days and everything in between. And then he says, love God with all your strength. More accurately, it means much, much or very loving God with all of our muchness, with all of our increase, with all that we have been provided, with all that gives us strength. That means money, that means time, and that means talent. All of our strength, all these gifts that we've been given, the abundance of gifts that we all share as churches, as congregations, we're to give with our strength and loving one another, loving your church family with all your strength, loving God, loving God with everything you have. Dear friends, this is high order. This is a high calling, and it's not easy. We can't do it alone. We need one another. We need our congregation to care for us and love us and to demonstrate that for us. So the people ask God, God, are you for us? And God says, I am. I am for you. I am the God for you. And then God puts it back. Are you with me? Love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might, and with all your soul. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. you to stand with me as we affirm this message tonight. Now some of you know this song and we're going to invite the choir to help us sing this song because I know they know it and it's exactly what you preached. Trust me. So let's sing it together. I'll help you. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. If you Trust me, trust me, trust me. <laughs> trust. from here.
response to your word is one in which we thank God for you reminding us of how much God loves us and wants us to trust him and how much we have this wonderful community. It's not just a community that ends here, it goes all the way to Tribuco Canyon and all the way into San Diego and up to Seattle in which we can continue to share God's love and God's word. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. You got to come back, okay? <laughs> Praise God. You may be seated. You will only trust me. Trust. I just have a few announcements to share. First of all, we want to, want to once again thank Reverend Dr. John McKee for such a powerful and timely message. And I'm gonna tell you how timely it is. I was in the fellowship hall talking to Don Oliver and he was talking to me about how we can go deeper into our prayer life just by repeating certain phrases what was the Hebrew phrase you used? The Jesus prayer. But he said he, he starts by saying a phrase, the Jesus prayer. He says it in his heart, and then he continues to say it in his head over and over again, over 8,000 times. 8,000 words in Hebrew, 8,000 times. And what was the word that you said? Shema. Yes. And when you said Shema and you talked about how kids want to misinterpret Shema, I was thinking, yeah, they're thinking Yoma, not Shema. <laughs> God is good. God is good. We want to thank, um, praise God for because, you know, it's nice to thank one another, but it's, it, it's wonderful to praise God for people who do great things in the church. But Tina Shea has initiated today with the Social Justice Committee, Freedom School. What a powerful opening. Oh, my. Every month, we're going to learn a little bit more about culture and history and why we are united in Christ. And so I encourage you on the third Saturdays of each month to attend Freedom School and learn a little bit more about who we are and who God is calling us to be. The Bible study on the book of Job, oh my, 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 my. If you have not signed up, I thoroughly encourage you to be a part of this great study. A survey was sent to you most recently the survey um, is, uh, the session is seeking to discern where we are with where our worship will be in the future, especially as we move into daylight savings time. We have to consider those who will find it difficult to come to church. And so we're taking a survey of the congregation to see how people feel about moving the time back or moving to a Sunday service. So once again, we're in this place called transition and change and we'll see where God lands us. But I know that we will get through it together and it shall be good. Amen. Miss Janice's memorial service is tomorrow at two o'clock. It will begin here and we'll be here in the, in the sanctuary and then we will move over to the fellowship hall. So we encourage all of you to come out and be a part of her memorial service. We want to also thank Michelle for that beautiful, beautiful leading of Craig. It's beautiful. And within Reverend McKay's message, he already did the stewardship message, telling us about our time, our talent, our treasure, and how it belongs to God, and we should use 
make our lives the living testament to who God is by the way in which we give, the way in which we live, the way in which we use the money that is a gift from God. And last week's stewardship committee, you remember, they did that dance and they did it to She Works Hard for the Money. If you remember. And the last phrase of that was, we work hard for the money, so we better treat God right. So I need you to give. God needs you. Well, God doesn't really need you to give. But I do believe that it is a part of our outpouring of grace. And so, you know, we've been talking about all these new songs. Y'all going to get tired of me with these new songs? Yes, you might. <laughs> but I have another one for you. And these are the simple words, simple words. You'll have the words on the screen next week. It just simply says, trust God, try God and see if he will not pour out a blessing on thee, a blessing that you will not have room to receive. Now tonight, you can give your offering in three different ways. You can give your offering tonight as you go out. You can give your offering online. You can mail in a check. But right now, we need to just stand and share this quick two-minute song. Trust God, try God, and see if he will not pour out a blessing on thee, a blessing that you will not have room to receive. Here we go. Trust God, try God, and see. Here we go. Trust God, try God and see if he will not, if he will not pour out on thee, pour out on thee a blessing, a blessing, a blessing that you will not have a room to receive. Let us worship the Lord with our offering and tithes. Let us worship the Lord with our offerings and our tithes. Let us worship the Lord with the way we live our lives, the way we live our lives. He'll make your enemies a good stool. Remember this as we go forward. We want to invite Reverend McCaig back up for a benediction and words of encouragement. You want me to do a whole other sermon? Whole words of encouragement? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have been so encouraged. Dear friends, thank you. May God bless you. When you go out into the world, go with peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good, right? <laughs> Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help those suffer. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Honor all people. As you love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.